This week on Three Sides of the Coin, when Mitch LaFon is at a Motley Crue concert, what does he look for? What does that have to do with Kiss? <laughs> I want to shout it out loud. Shout it. Oh, Chris, my voice is going. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. Is this the right podcast, Mitch? We do so many of them, I can't remember. Well, well this is, so the, yeah, it is the Mitch podcast. This is the Mitch podcast? Mitch and yeah. his mom? Yes, yeah, the Mitch and mom podcast. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome to Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandvold. As always, I'm joined by Tommy Summers. How you doing, Tommy? I'm doing great today. How are you? Not Mitch, how bad. are you? Oh, and Mitch... I'm I'm good. Look, he's got his Motley Crue T-shirt today. Look at yeah. that. Yes. Okay, who can rec- Who who knows what this T-shirt is? Bumblefoot. Bumblefoot. Oh, yeah. I need Bumblefoot. one of those. Yeah, this that's, is a cool. That's a generally shirt. nice guy. Very cool guy. Very big Kiss fan. I'll throw him. I'll throw him a little plug. He's got some amazing hot sauces, and it's yeah. not just him putting his name on somebody's hot sauce. He helped put these recipes together. He knows his stuff when it comes to food, and it's already won some awards. So, oh, very head, cool. Head over to bumblefoot.com, and you can you can pick up some of his hot sauces. He's also a very great music fan, not just Kiss, but yes. name him an album, and he'll play it from Human ju- Human Jukebox. That's cool. Exactly. So, right. so 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 what are we? We are one week after you're you're watching this one week after part two of Frank Munoz came out. We are recording this two days after Frank Munoz came out. Right. Oh, don't you want to rephrase that? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> I was just thinking, do I try and rephrase that or do I just plow right through that one? Apparently his partner's coming out tomorrow. Uh, so what was I going to say? Oh, sorry, Frankie. Like two days, already 1,200 views he started on it. YouTube. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic. And the first episode, over 10,000 views, and it still keeps growing. Yes. So thank, thank you, you mommy. so much for oh, hitting the fans? play button, everybody. Yeah, your mom did Sorry. it 10,000 times. We know that. Uh, I bet you she did. Yeah. So I think the response <laughs> has been very cool to this part two one. Lots of, yeah. uh, you know, we didn't come off hating. Although Tommy did call him a horse, I think, right? That's horse your interpretation. <laughs> That's your interpretation. You know, we, what, we're three minutes into it and you're already throwing me under the bus. <laughs> exactly. we got to keep you under the bus. Yeah, I know. Uh, when comments you just, like, have, been, comments have been really good. I mean, very cool discussions, very civil, no hate this, no hate that. So mm-hmm. I, I That's good. That. That's cool. That's what we like. It's very cool. Um... So, oh, before I forget, please go give us a five-star review on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Tommy's wife and Mitch's mom would love it. Right. Though his wife Absolutely. will never know. She'll, she doesn't even know he's on iTunes yet. <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> I should tell her. You hey, should. honey. I bet yeah. if you, um, you know, I bet if you went and searched for Tommy Summers on iTunes, you might pop up. Maybe yeah, she right. played it. She played one on uh, Stitcher, I think, and she's like, "I made it for about I don't know five, ten minutes, she's and like, then I'd had enough." <laughs> oh, That's I'm okay. Yes, you. yes. If you search for iTunes, Tommy Summers, you you show up. Do I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, well that's cool. Look at that. Something more she can be proud of. Absolutely, got to give her what I can. You know. So, uh, yeah. So kiss, kiss give on. us a review. Kiss, 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 kiss. Let's go. Kiss. What do we got? Oh, for Christ's sake, Mitch, don't you talk enough about this damn band? Ooh, they, they're re-releasing Monster with a bonus track. Yeah, and what is that bonus track from? From iTunes, but hopefully... There you, there, there you go. So you've already bought it. You're going to buy it again. He's, no, I have it on a physical He's going to buy CD. it again. He, who, what... That guy is going to buy it again. Why? <sighs> because it's got the German logo got on Gene it. got Gene on it. And it's got a poster in it. Woohoo! Let's rip the fans off again. 
And I'm, no, not, but I'm, gonna... I'm not directing this towards Kiss because this is all universal shit. This yeah. Is, you know, the one thing I wonder stuff. about that is if you noticed on iTunes, the right here, right now, sonically wasn't equal to the rest of the album. They didn't master it as part of the album. I'm hoping that this time around they made it uniform so that when you get to that 13th track, there's not this drop-off. That's, that's one of the reasons why I'd like to buy it, just so that, yeah, that sonically stop, it's uniform. Stop making excuses, Mitch. I'd buy it anyway. Even Listen. if it sucked, you would buy it anyway. Kiss gold. Jesus. You're the guy that bought that. And, and, you know what? And, and I got to say something here. This Sonically, they didn't mix it. This I could give a fucking rat's ass. I am not Rick. that type of a fan that's like, oh, my God, it's, the levels have got to be a little better. It's got to be a little bit. Fuck no. I got the song. It sounds great. I don't need to buy it again. But why are they re-releasing it like this? Tour support. Because they're out tour for the, support in the Germany. European tour. I mean, okay. I guarantee you something like that will happen over here when the tour kicks off in Canada and the U.S. There'll probably be another re-release of something here. Labels are, are notorious for doing that. Right. They yeah, just can't get sense. away with it anymore, typically. Well, they, well, they get away with it as long as bands have fans like Mitch. True. Yeah. That's yeah. why they love me. They'll yeah. stop doing it no, if but, people don't buy it. Well, I, the only thing I found interesting is that as I researched it through the internet to find out where it was available, uh, it's only in Germany, and yet the tour is not just in Germany. So either the other stores haven't caught up, or maybe Universal France has decided not to gouge the fa I mean, uh, help out the fans with an extra track. Help out. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of assistance I do not need. They're yeah. doing us a favor. Yeah, please. Um, oh, there, there was a, there was a another uh, topic related to uh, album releases. There was a question on Three Sides of the Coin Facebook today. Somebody had asked that uh, they couldn't find Ace Frehley's Anomaly in iTunes, and would I be able to find out? So I um, chatted with Frank, and he said about a year ago the label pulled it. Yeah, the label Which pulled, surprised me. pulled Anomaly off of iTunes. So. You can't buy a digital release of Anomaly. It's not on Amazon MP3. It's not on iTunes. Um, you know, it's physical CDs only. It's basically what you can get at this point in time. Yeah. And probably that's, some leftover vinyls. But I wonder odd. why. Hmm. There must be a story behind that somewhere. I don't know. Oh, well. I don't we'll know. figure it out. That's part three. I, I can you imagine. Do some more digging. More digging. Well, I think you can take an educated guess. If they're pulling stuff, somebody's not happy somewhere. So, Mitch, who knows? Mitch isn't happy. I'm not happy. No. They should put it on there, and they should re-release it with bonus tracks. I'd buy it again if it had the country track on it. Mm -hmm. So today's topic is going to be Tommy's grab bag. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have uh, put together a couple of uh, different interesting questions that I'm going to throw at you guys today to see what you think. So uh, are you ready? Right, I'm ready. Speed round. Okay. So let's start out with some of the obvious ones that we mentioned before we started here. Um, I'm the best do you host. Guys... No? You said obvious. How do I mute that channel? You actually can, can't you? Uh -huh. no, I don't you have Oh, no, I can mute my mic. Uh, well, hold on. Let me see. Like what, a... what, what's the drop down say here? I can hang up on you. <laughs> People do like you, though, Mitch. You're very, very popular. But they like it when we bust his balls, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just so easy, you know? Said the real right. estate agent from Minnesota. <laughs> oh, yeah, and you're in Canada. Exactly. All well, right. You got nothing to brag about there, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with the weather today. It's bloody horrible out here today. Hey, what yeah. was that, eh? It's horrible. Hey. Is horrible today. <laughs> Take off. All right. All right. So, um, do either of you care to comment on the Kiss Expo from the Indianapolis that just took place last week? Yeah. Why weren't we there? Why didn't we get an invite? It's funny. When you think about know. it, Kevin Valentine was there, and that all started with us here. He had never thought of doing those before us, and I guess somebody from... The Kiss World listened in and thought, hey, let's invite Kevin Valentine. But, yeah. uh, you know, listen, um, hopefully as this show grows, maybe we'll 
be invited to these things. I would have loved to have been there. And, you know, it was interesting that Gene Simmons showed up. I, I wonder what kind of strings or deals were pulled with that. But, um, I think it was just uh, how big the stack of dead presidents was. But I heard it was very accommodating. Yeah, no, know, no. I mean, very I, nice. mean I, I saw online where <coughs> it was a huge success. He, yeah. he was very friendly, very talkative, answered many questions. Um, <coughs> everybody loved it. Um, you know, hats off, 15th anniversary, Indie Kiss Expo to uh, Keith LaRue and Steve Stewart. Yeah, absolutely. Putting it together, you know, that, that's, that's, they've raised the bar. Mm -hmm. 16th year has to be that good, too. There's two right. things that I find interesting on this one. Uh, first was Kevin Valentine, the fact that he was there, and the fact that he got to speak openly and on video for people to hear him tell his stories about being in Psycho Circus and helping Ace and Peter. So it's nice to see Gene and Paul give him that venue to, to say it out loud. And the other thing that was mentioned again here first was the Bruce Kulik and Bob Kulik, Kulik Brothers kind of event. And to hear Bob Kulik play the songs from Alive 4 and play them live, that, that too was very cool. Do you know, I mean, I it was mean, a great event. I, I, this is just nitpicking, but I would have rather seen Bruce and Bob put together some ESP type of band and play right. than them guesting with this band DST. I don't know who DST is. Must be some local indie band. I mean, good for those guys. They got to share the stage with the Kulik brothers. But to me, it would have it would have been really cool if you know it was Bruce Kulik and Bob Kulik and Eric Singer and Kevin you know, Valentine. Some you know Gene it's, on bass. Oh, Gene, he's not going to play. But but you, you but get you know, where I'm going. It would have been cooler but, if it was kind of like a mini superstar <laughs> because that's how the ESP project was actually created. It was at the Indie Expo. And with Keith LaRue? Keith LaRue did it, yeah. and he just brought those guys in at the same expo, and they got up and jammed, and it went so well that it turned into the Eric Singer project. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I'd like know, to... Bruce could have played bass while Bob played guitar, and you know, you throw on Kevin or Eric on drums, you got a, a little power trio going on. could have been cool. Yeah. But still, I'm not complaining. It, it was still very cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to back up to something oh. you said earlier, Mitch. One last hmm? thing, Tommy. The DST band, they just released a new CD and Bruce plays on it. He, he played a couple of tracks, so that's the connection there. Well, who are they? Okay. I mean, do you know who are they? No, uh, yeah, well, one of them follows me on Facebook. I, I don't know the names right off the top of my head, but they're just a, a bunch of guys like us who decided to put a CD together and, and had Bruce come on and, you know, they're, they're honest. They, they put their heart into it and... I guess they got themselves an invite to the Kiss Expo as a as a backup band. Good for them. Well, maybe well maybe someone could put a link on the Facebook page so that people that want to find that can. You know what would have actually have been cool is if if Bruce and Bob um, sat in and played with Wicked Lester. Mm. Yeah, the reunited Wicked Lester. Are we really gonna go? Or would you want to start that? <laughs> or do you really want to go there? We're gonna have to talk about music to load out load out to and and all that kind of stuff. Is that really? I where didn't we're say going? that. I said it would be very cool. You're the yep. one that's saying it's music to load out to. <laughs> we'll see how it gets okay. interpreted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to back up, though, to something you said earlier, Mitch, and maybe Michael said it, too. You said that you we should have been there. So my yeah. question to you is, what would we be doing there? Signing, We're just autogra signing autographs and, and meeting our illustrious fans. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, we could certainly. I, don't know, we, I mean, we could we, 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 we could we could record one everything. of these live at an expo. Yeah. We could we could set up a table with three mics and have Eric come and sit next to us, and then Kevin come we, sit next to us, sort of a. We could be you know. moderators of the Q and A. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, and since we're saying that right now uh, about we doing one live, there's Gene Simmons. <laughs> Well, and since we're covering that right now, Mike, maybe you want to mention again about what we're going to try and attempt to do here coming up in the next week or so. What are what? we attempting to do? The live 
thing that you oh, want to put I together. Oh, forgot all cool. about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of important to um, mention right now are, so people get it. Um, let's see. What date is that going to be? We are going to record hey, next first. Tuesday. Holy crap. Got it. Holy crap. Next Tuesday. Next 3 p.m. 3.15 Central Time? Yeah, 3 p.m. Oh, no, wait a second. 2 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. Okay. 5 okay. p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central. Central. Uh, we okay. are going to record this show live. That means you're going to be able to watch these schmucks, the three <laughs> schmucks that we are, do this live in a Google Hangout on-air broadcast. Yes, and I believe it's 9 a.m. in uh, Australia. I don't know. What, 9 a.m. three days later or two days earlier? The day after. <laughs> I, well, and, I, and, and I think it's 16 hours between here and Montreal. You, 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 can, you can find the all this information on the events tab on the Facebook page. It's got the link where you'll be able to go um, watch this. Basically, what you're going to do is watch this live on YouTube. It's going to stream live on the YouTube channel that you normally would go to to watch any of these episodes, but it'll be streaming live as we sit here and fumble and talk and and make and fun whatever. of Tommy. We'll 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 do something yeah. like you could probably ask questions and comment via Twitter and Facebook, and we'll see if we can take some of those questions. <coughs> in. you won't be joining us live. Because the Hangout doesn't allow unlimited people into the video chat. So it's just going to be the three of us in the video chat, but you will be able to watch this live. That's right. And then what ends up so When my kid walks in, it won't be edited out. Right, exactly. But when that's over, then it doesn't get posted again until the normal time the following week. Because I'm right. going right. to edit it up and post it and everything else. So basically all you're going to be doing is... Being a live studio audience watching the the recording of the show. Is yeah, and you can make comments. Really and, but go ahead. Well, we can we can answer some questions like Mike said, and we'll talk about what you want to talk about. Yeah. So we can talk about what five man kiss. We can. Wicked any Lester, you guys want to talk about? Five man Kid kiss. Lester. You name it. Uh -huh. um, you name it. It, it. It's it's our first. Don't name it. Not the Eric Carr insurance thing. We don't know. It's our first attempt at doing this, so if it goes well, we'll schedule more of them. I don't think we're going to do it live all the time, um, but it'll be fun to see how well it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we're trying to bring you more quality content. Yeah, and, then, and at some point, maybe try it with a guest. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, bring in, uh, whatever, Kevin Valentine for our part two and... Have them sit here and type in a question for. I mean, who knows? We'll we'll see where it goes. Okay. We just got to see if the technology will permit it, right? Comcast and Google. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Google. So All right, this so is going to be to an kids, experiment. Guys. All right. We so talk about kids, kids, kids. Uh, since this is my grab bag, the next thing I'd like to talk about is, but it's kind of a, a two-part question tied together. I want to talk about the new stage and what we've heard mm -hmm. so far and your reactions to it along with what else do you think that they're missing that they should be doing? Well, I, I will jump in an easy and, answer. and say that the new stage that they've been talking about and uh, let me just read a quote because I pulled this quote off that came from Paul which really impressed me. Um, Paul Stanley said, quote, you know, for so many years we've talked about a new stage show and basically what we've been doing has been an extension of the old stage show. So people right. would sometimes come and see, c come and obviously the band does a great show and it's great to be there, but some people would say, gee, it doesn't look that different. This is a completely different stage. It follows a really great theme. The lights are like nothing you've ever seen before. So, you know, we've all heard the, oh, we're doing a new stage. We've right. said that many times before. Right. This is the first time I've heard Paul or anybody in the band actually kind of admit to what we've all been saying. Of, mm -hmm. Well, gee, your, your new stages haven't really been new stages. It's just a stack of amps that now have video screens in front of them instead of, right. you know, speaker grills. You know, yeah. there, no, you know, nothing's really changed. You're still flying out over the audience. Gene still flies up. 
you know, Tommy still shoots a rocket out of his guitar. Nothing's really changed. It's just kind of more lights, more pyro. So right. I thought it was really kind of interesting that this is the first time the band actually recognized <laughs> what's so. been said. That gives me more hope. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, something I, cool I totally is agree. Happen. Right. Well, I mean, especially it, it, since it's, it's coming out of reading. Paul's mouth. It, yeah, you're right. Coming out of Paul's mouth means a lot more than coming out of Gene's mouth because Gene will spout anything off. Now, one of the things Gene apparently did while he was at the Indie Expo was tell fans about what this new stage is going to be like and actually showed a few of them some photos on his iPhone of some mock-ups. <laughs> what I thought was funny is somewhere I read somebody said, um, was it the next day that Eric Singer made a comment of, oh, Paul's going to get pissed if, when he finds out Gene was showing those photos. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey. Gene, Gene, well. Gene, lo Gene loves to just get out there and just... Before we get into the whole stage thing, <laughs> did they mention anything about new outfits to go along with the new stage thing? Because that I missed. I didn't see it anywhere. No, no I, don't, I don't think so, and I don't... At least for me, I don't feel like they need new outfits. They've got the yeah, monster they outfits. Did. They're on the monster tour, so monster outfits would be okay. Would would be fine for me. I'm just saying that yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna sort of strip it down and rebuild it, why not go the extra mile and just rebuild it from the ground up? But okay, Again, I, I just I don't, I don't think the the outfits needed it. Um, staging no. definitely needed it, and. You know, now, yeah. now now comes the, all right, so they're talking about this stage, or Gene is talking about this stage that's supposedly like spider legs, that the legs can lift up and shoot fireballs out over the audience, and it can crawl off the stage. Now, that could be Isn't interpreted that, yeah. so many different ways. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what Alice Cooper did during the Welcome to My Nightmare tour when they do the song Black Widow and he had a big spider come out on the stage? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm visioning two different things here. A giant stage, just as Gene said, or a little spider stage prop that that's sort of like Stonehenge from Spinal Tap. That <laughs> exactly. That's what like, I was thinking, too. That's the or giant freaking spider the you were talking show. about. It lifts up and goes, <laughs> Where's the druid? You know? Right. So, I mean... Well, I mean that that's always what ends up happening when when new stages are hyped. It's like, is it quite that hyped, or is it? That's why I almost yeah. wish they they would say nothing. Well, I mean, you know, at that, least from a detail too. standpoint. The problem too is getting the stages into the venues they're playing. Yeah, now you come to the Bell Center in Montreal, you got a ton of room, but you go to the uh, Verona Casino where I'm going to see them about two weeks later. That's a tiny little place. So if they have a big giant spider. You might not get it in some of the smaller videos. Hello? Mm -hmm. I, I'm here. Where'd you go, Mitch? Oh, I just saw myself. Did, did you hear what I said at least? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So, so um, you know, if you're in Toronto or in Montreal, you might get the whole thing. But if you're in Verona, New York, or at Mohegan Sun, oh, Mohegan Sun's big enough, actually. You maybe you'll get a smaller version or no version. So well, I think we'll that's, that's always the case with any staging. Is is they yeah. have right. to you know first of all they probably build it to some basic average standard and then they have the ability to add out or retract it if need be to fit different things. But I, I just I feel much better that it was Paul Stanley who made that comment. Oh, absolutely, because that that's from like the hand of God in a sense. That yeah, and yeah. when it comes to the Kiss world. Paul says it, it happens. He doesn't go right. talking about Kiss World and Kiss Teddy Bear and, you know, Kiss the Ant. He doesn't do that. Right. Goes, so, this is our album. This so is what I'm, 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 I'm excited. I mean, <coughs> I'm still in that position of if I'm going to go see the band, I am waiting until I see actual photos and video clips of what this is going to look like mm -hmm. to see if well, it's actually going to be amazing. Well, I'm, I think not, the I'm most... going to three shows. Well, of course you are. You're also buying the the monster release from Germany that has well, already pre-ordered. And this is the right time to plug that whole thing. Don't forget, if you see Mitch and you do the pie thing, we put you on the show. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I'll be with my so, kids. I prom and, and you know what? Yeah, this don't goes, get any on the kids. This goes to you, five-man kiss. I'll even put you on if you go to a show and put a pie in Mitch's face. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'll be with so, my kids. Yeah, I'll that's what I said. Charges. What kind of pie do your kids like? Because they could lick it off of your face. They have food allergies. 
Be careful. Okay, okay, so well, no one so, use so, a peanut. Don't what? do a no peanut peanuts? pie. Nothing no, with peanuts. No peanut butter, people. Um, so yeah, no I thought the most, peanuts. Go, go ahead. I just think the most interesting thing that he said in that whole you know, piece that you read was that um, it's, it follows a theme which is something that I personally have been hoping for like, for a very long yeah, time. To me, the Destroyer too. stage, for those of you who did not get to see it, was unbelievably cool because it was something different than they had ever done before. And it seemed like once they did Love Gun, then a lot of the, the stages, even though they changed throughout the years, had a central theme to them that lacked a theme. you know. And this, the, the Destroyer thing, was a theme with the burnt out city and the castle and all that. I'm really hoping that with the monster idea that they're going to take it to a new level and again really return to a theme that creates a look of the stage. Yeah, I'm exact. I'm with you on that one. I mean, I I don't I don't like seeing Kiss just play on a stage with a bunch of amps and drum ki- and a drum kit. To me, Kiss needs to be everything visual. I mean, that that's why going all the way back to Creatures, it was like fuck, it's a gigantic tank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a theme yeah. to that. Even yeah. revenge was sort of a theme. That was a that was you know a, a, a destroyed New York City and stuff like that. So you know that had a theme to it. But smut, so much of this stuff is just like yeah, let's just add more lights. Oh yeah, let's add six more pyro stacks. It's like what the fuck? Everybody can do that. What was right. the asylum theme? Um, yellow lightning bolts that walked up into nowhere. Yeah, that was no, but we're, we're missing one very important point in all of this, is, at least for me. I don't really give a, a rat's ass about this, the staging. Uh, if you come up there and you give me a drum solo, the guitar solo, and a bass solo, and you rob me of extra songs, I mean, bugger off. And if you give me the same 17 what? songs... What? was that? Bugger off? <laughs> bugger off! He's, he's British today. I'm British today. Can you tell? My voice is straining. No, but listen... Uh, if, it, you know, on the uh, convention tour, they, they, they showed up and they played on chairs and they played, you know, all kinds of crazy songs, Love Her All I Can, Plaster Cast or whatever. I would rather hear different songs than have Gene be shot out of a cannon. So I, good I, on I, them I, for I, having a K- spider. Kiss, is a, Kiss but, is a visual band. Oh, I agree. Oh, I would totally love to see Gene get shot out of a cannon. I'm sure a lot <laughs> of people awesome. would. I yeah, completely awesome. agree that they're a. I think people I would love that to they're see a visual band. In the cannon. <laughs> no, but listen. <laughs> Give a bunch of fans at the other end of the arena the net to hold up. Oops. <laughs> oh no! No, but uh, listen, it would be great to have different staging. But if the different staging doesn't come along with different set lists, or at least an effort to change it a little bit from night to night, then it's just wasted time. See, I it's disagree. got. It's got to go I, both I, ways. I would disagree. I think a stale set list could be much more exciting with a really exciting stage and stage oh, show. Oh, come on. I do. Well, you're going to you're going to get a stale set list either way, so you might as well get a stale set list with a new stage than the same old same and, old. And 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 I'll also go back to Kiss is a visual band. The, no, I, I, agree. Don't, I don't give a crap if it's a great set list if they just get up there and play their songs in makeup like they're standing in front of a bunch of amps, that's boring as hell. That's not what you go to a Kiss show for. So so that means that when you got an album, all you did was stare at the cover and didn't listen to the music? I mean, come on. No, you can't. You, those, that's not a fair comparison. About? Yeah. Well, the, mu- the music is as part as much part of the show as anything else. Listen, I just saw I'm Motley Crue Monday that. night. I'm just saying the show is as, <coughs> as equally important. And you're, and you're saying it's not. You would go see... A great set list with no stage show and a boring stage. Sort of. I'm saying that if I had to choose, I would choose better set list over better stage. That's what I'm saying. Right, and I would choose opposite. Right. And, well, and, okay, but, and they're perfect. But the reality is, is that you're not going to get what you want with this one, Mitch. So, you know, it, it's just one yes, of those I things am. where I'd still well, rather no, have that. Here's, here's the reality, Tommy. It doesn't matter because Mitch has already blindly bought tickets to three shows. That's so Mitch's true. opinion does not matter. Okay, so then do <laughs> we just do we black this part out, or what, what do you do? We just let him rant, and then we just tell everybody to ignore that testimony, strike that from the records. No. Okay, so no one heard that. <laughs> I'm going for the okay. music. I bought the tickets before I heard about the stage, so Mike needs to wait for YouTube video to decide if he's a fan or not. Wah, wah, wah. 
So you bought you you may you may have bought tickets for a boring set list and a boring stage. This is well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he got you there, Mitchy. All right. Hey. Okay. It's so kids, is there anything to go? Is, is, is there anything else either of the two of you feel that they're not doing that they should be doing? Because I knew the obvious. As they're soon they're as not you striking out that, those stupid solos. Get rid of the fucking solos. Waste okay. of everybody's time. Okay. All right. The, Anything the else? Er, the Eric Tommy jam is nine minutes. Gene's basing is three. That's twelve minutes. In Kiss World, that's four extra songs. Give but, me four songs. But you know, we could get into this, and we probably did back in our set list discussion. They probably need those breaks. These okay. Guys are, so, these guys are not twenty-five years old anymore. They okay, need I'll the break to go off stage and okay. rest and breathe in from the oxygen tanks and. Get their vitamin B shots and everything Fine. else. But then, listen, I was at Motley Crue on uh, Monday night, and Tommy Lee's drum solo was entertaining because he was spinning around and they were doing different drum beats. At least make it an integral part of the show, that's not a, just a waste of time. That's an interesting stage show, Mitch. Yes. Mm -hmm. and it made Maybe a drum that's solo. what Kiss is doing. Maybe they're going to create an interesting stage and stage show here. No. Did Gene's Tommy have solo. the thing that went like this again still? You know, uh, it looks like a roller coaster. coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then how long did they play for? Uh, they played 17 songs. It started at uh, no, about an hour and a half. Okay, because to me that's not long enough. They should be playing two no, hours. It's not. And, and that's what I would say about the Kiss thing, is doing different. Now that they're back out as headliners on their own, they need to be playing a minimum of two hours. Yeah. Well, you know, at least one thing was Kiss. You know, the Motley Crue has those girl backup singers. I hate to tell it to everybody, but they're playing to a tape. They're not actually singing live. And uh, Tommy's little piano bit, tape. Who cares? I mean, if it sounds uh, good. Uh, but then don't bring the backup singers. Leave them home and just tell everybody you're triggering part, it for the drum. Nah, that's part of the rock and roll imagery that they're that's part of the stage show. Then get so are you girls saying you don't like, like to look at women? They didn't look like women. They look like Russian male gymnasts for Christ's <laughs> sakes. Oh, so Mitch liked looking at Russian male gymnasts. No, I didn't. That's what was the problem. Girl had a muscles out to here. Her, her arms are number? bigger than my legs. <laughs> I was looking for a cock through the spandex. Is that a cock? I you think I see it, a bulge. You Why were you such... looking for a cock? Because I was sure <laughs> it was a man. He says that with such a hopeful tone. I was like, I think that's a dude. Oh, look. look There's for a the bulge. Adam's apple. Yeah, oh, I didn't look at that. That's a good point. Okay. Come on. Uh, moving if you're going to have fake backup singers, then oh, throw God. out some 21 year olds in a bikini crying out loud. My yeah, wife's I mean, not listening, obviously. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, be let's on move YouTube on. For the rest of your life. Eh, I don't care. <laughs> your kids, when they're in high school, are going to be going, that's my dad. Ah, they hear it all. <laughs> Rob, you just got out of that 30 second diatribe. It's fantastic. I know. I'll be on Howard Stern all these drops. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me find out how many minutes are we in this so I can pull those clips out. That was about 35 38 minutes. 58. In. 35 minutes. I have 38 in. 58. <laughs> okay, right, so let's move on while Mike is doing that. Okay, Mitch, you start with this one. Uh, how do you feel about the rock and brews? I mean, we touched on it last week when we were talking about the things the that Gene's involved in. Huh? The, the restaurant, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you feel about them, the, the two of them going in together and opening up these different restaurants? Very simply, Paul's on board. It'll be good. And you know what? You know, Sammy Hager has his Cabo Wabo Cantinas. Uh, whatever you call him, and he's done very well. I mean, he he had his bought a tequila business, sold it for eighty million. You know, good on them. The only thing that I like is Paul's involved, so there'll be some integrity and there'll be some, uh, you know, uh, there'll be some pride and ownership put into it. It won't just be something with a sticker that says, you know, GS was here. Right. Leave your dollar at the door. So, okay. yeah, perfectly oh, fine with point. me, Mike. I, I agree, Paul you know, because Paul wasn't involved when it initially launched. It was a Gene Simmons project. And it took a few months, and then all of a sudden Paul came on board. And, and to me, that said something like Paul looked at this, 
you said I like what it's doing. I believe in what it's doing. It feels real, honest, whatever. Blah blah blah. I will get behind it. Yeah. Well, yeah, and he I doesn't agree. Slap with... his name onto everything he does, like Gene. Right, yep. and I agree with both of you, and and I think it's a cool thing. And uh, you know, aside from just the integrity, that's kind of what we were talking about two weeks ago. Was that was the point? Is that it seems like our, when it comes to artistic creation or integrity when Paul's involved that's kind of the case and that was what we right. were trying to say you know a few weeks ago that you really think that this is actually going to work yeah and last I, I, and not I, just I think that's a, what it that to me that's what it says when Paul gets involved he thinks it's gonna work and it's got legs and it's good right well, well I mean yeah I mean just look at the the recording history they did psycho circus then they did nothing. Paul got involved as a producer. Sonic Boom came out two years later or whatever, three years later. Monster came out. I mean, when Paul gets involved, it gets done. He, he, mm -hmm. he, you know, he's your go-to guy and it has integrity. It's not like, you know. Well, let's Gene be Simmons clear. It doesn't tongue. mean this is going to be a success because restaurants can come and go. Right. Overnight. That's a whole different, it's it a fickle just business. Mean, it just means that. It's Paul worth at least checking feels, out. Feels, Paul probably feels like this has got something solid to it, and he believes in what it's doing. Right, yeah. and, and, and he won't let it fail. He'll go that extra mile to meet the managers and meet the cooks and meet the whatever business associates. So I'm all for it. I mean, listen, Sammy Hager has had uh, success with his restaurants. People like them. They're in Vegas. They're in uh, Cabo Wabo. So why not kiss? Mm -hmm. I, I, know, I got no issues. Right. Alice, Alice Cooper too. Alice Cooper Town down in Phoenix or somewhere in Arizona at least. Phoenix, Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why yeah, not? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got the Fair. spider from the Alice Cooper tour. Now you got the restaurant, you know, and then that song eighteen or dreaming from. So we just follow Alice Cooper all the way along. Just copy Alice. Let Alice do it first. He did <sighs> I'm eighteen. Kissed it. Dreaming. He did, did the Bob Ezrin. Kissed it. Bob Ezrin. See, he did Alice makeup. Cooper broke up. Kiss, Kiss broke up. Right, makeup. So we'll just follow Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper went you. back to Bob Ezrin. So the next album, Kiss, will go back to Bob Ezrin. See, see how it works. Okay, um, this one is going to be kind of a hard one for me to clarify. So I'll do my best here, and hopefully, you guys will help me with it. Is there a period, and I'm speaking mostly from the start of the band up through Creatures when they took it off the first time, the makeup. Is there a specific time period that you like the makeup the best? Because as the band progressed from 73, it changed a little bit and kept changing and changing as we went through. I mean, the characters stayed the same, but they added color. They removed color. They did bolder lines, things well, like you're, that. You're Is not there talking a, costume. You're just talking the face just, makeup? Just the face paint itself. Yeah, Is, I have an and, answer and, to that. Yeah, okay. What, what do you guys, what do you prefer and would you want them to go back to that? And you can, you can include... You know, Tommy and Eric in this. Now, granted, their face shape is different than, than Ace and Peter's, so there's a limit to what you can and can't do with that. But how do you guys feel? What did, yeah, was there a period I have you like? a very specific answer. I mean, okay. Kiss, I really entered the Kiss universe strongly on the Dynasty thing, so that's my connection. So that whole era of the, you know, the, the costumes and that makeup and the blue and the green, uh, whether it's the best or not, it's the one that pulled me that I have a more sort of emotional connection to so for me that has to be it okay all right you know, because, because of what it meant in my life so, you know you, you know you grow up and you have that one song that will always make you fire that one song that will make you think of oh I lived in Paris at the time or whatever well that Kiss Dynasty makeup to me was me at nine years old or eight years old buying the album putting it on so so it's that one and okay. you can't change it because it's based on an emotion, not on a analytical point of view. Okay. Mike? Um, yeah, I have a very specific time and makeup. I would have to say it's the hippie look from Wicked Lester that really grabbed me. <laughs> it's the bell bottoms? 
And the the mustaches. Yeah, they can just put it, put the makeup around the mustache. <laughs> now, when you say the makeup era, do you include the asylum years in that? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Good a, point. I didn't even think about that. A lot <laughs> of you makeup. Prefer there. B. Arthur. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I've never really thought of it. There's never well, there's really an era been, you must. There's never been one specific makeup that where I'm like I really connected to that styling or that design. I mean, especially you know, Gene would change his bat wings. Well, so that's many not true. You 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 talked a lot about the elder. You you like Gene's elder look and and that, makeup. No no, and... no 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 no. That's costume. Okay. That's okay. Costume. You're right. We're not talking costume. We're not nope. talking hairstyles. Um, you know, I can't honestly say there's one specific era period of the face makeup that, that I really identified with. I'm waiting for them to put the Dionysi costumes back on. That would be awesome. awesome. Right. Well, and I, I would agree with Mitch on this one because Woo! I like, yeah, yeah. Gotta because throw I one like every that. once in a while. Yeah. Well, I like that era. And, and most importantly, I really thought Gene looked the coolest with the way he did the makeup during that period. I don't like what he's doing now. I like the, the bigger, thicker lines right here than how he had it in the, or he's been doing it where it's really, it's much slighter here at this point. But and is, I would say- is that Partially because his face is a little more plumper and rounder. No, uh -uh, because if you look at the first reunion shots of them look when they first hate. came back. You hear that hate? It, yeah, well, I know. It, it, you know, it happens every week. Gene, but, I love uh, you. Call me, please. I'm supposed to. You have my number. No, anyway, go on. No, I was just saying, I think that that's, that to me, there's just something really cool about the way he had the setup at that point. And if you look at just the beginning of the reunion tour, it was much more slight at that point. Like, I, I can't stand the look on the first record at all. I, you know, I Granted, wonder, you know, when, when he's done those changes, I wonder if a lot of that is conscious effort or if it's just sort of, all right, I'm just, you know, the amount of time he's putting into it and the and the precision he's putting into it just changes from period to period. Or, you know, again, was it a real conscious effort of, oh, I'm going to make these wings a little shorter and fuller? Right. Or right. is it just laziness I... in a different year? You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that thought, it could come down to just something like that. I mm -hmm. would say it's probably It would be more... KISS fans overanalyzing. Now, that never happens. No, We're but you know right what? The, the makeup designs, I would... I would almost bet anything that Bill Olcoin sat down and said on TV that's not working we don't see we always see his white from a distance you you need I, I, would, I would think Bill Olcoin had a lot to do with that because he was all about branding and imaging and selling and I would I would think it's not Gene and Paul who decided I would think because Paul started off as the bandit I'm right. sure somebody looked at it and went it's not working from the back row I, I don't I don't get it the star, well, even with, you're a star. But even with Paul, though, there is a, a small window of time where if you look at those photos from early 76 or so, he was actually shading no, was, this area say, yeah, gray. Yeah, he had gray cheekbone shading. Yeah, you around, know. Around the love gun era. Wasn't it? Oh, I thought it was earlier. I thought it was earlier because I think he still had, I was going to say, Destroyer into Rock and Roll Over right Maybe around the was. time that he... Yeah. So, you know, but to me, I thought it was an interesting point to bring up simply because it, it does definitely change the look. And I did, I did like when they added the color in the dynasty era. So for me, looking at them now, I'd like to see Gene go back to that, but I'd also like to see Tommy and Eric maybe change it a little bit as well. Cause I think like, and this is again, personal opinion, Tommy is too much like this and then straight across and then down. And these are really, really wide. I'd be interesting to see what he would do if he could bring it up a little bit higher and longer and thinner because I think it would look cooler. What if he put like God, a cross right up the middle of his nose and uh, what about that? <sighs> Just really? What if he really? changed it to a dog? Oh. Yeah. Lobster. No, I just, you wanted Spider. us to geek out, so I thought today would be the day to geek out, and here All we right. are. So let's go. Let's, let's get to go. the next so topic. I, I'm curious to see what other people will say about that. They'll All say right. Mitch so, is right. Keep moving. 
No, really, I'd be interesting to see what people say about that. Okay, next okay. one is, and this one's going to take up a little more time, so I kind of left this one towards the end. Good. And I want you to, I want you, the two of you, all right, now I'll throw my two cents in afterwards, but I want the... Make up and be nice? No. The wicked left. I want the two of you to act as attorneys with Ooh. the respect of that you're both in court and you Ooh. both have to have your own reasoning for this. And unless you end up on the same side of the table, but I don't necessarily think that you will. As Who, a side note, I was just in court for a band. Oh. Yeah. I, I don't even know where they to go. They made me with. testify in a case, oh well, last really? week. Mm. Yeah, it was something to do with Vinnie Vincent makeup. Adam's I actually didn't. It was one of the '80s band, but I can't give names. Names, so but Vinnie that's Vincent, the fun part Vinnie about Vincent it. Invasion. Right? That's the fun part about being a rock reporter. Sometimes you get uh, subpoenaed. Yay! When you wonder what, uh, I'll tell you later. No, I can't okay. actually. Never mind. No. Yeah, you probably got the gag order. They gave him a gag. <laughs> and a banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Tip your waiters. We're done. <laughs> All right. So, um, who is the better songwriter, Gene or Paul, and why? Uh, you know, I'm going to answer this very simply. I've been, uh, you know, I'm doing that tribute CD, and I've been writing out the songs because I have to write all the all the mechanicals and all the things. I have written on those sheets more times Paul Stanley than Gene Simmons, and it's just like. I never noticed it, but I guess people just like Paul songs because it must have be a ratio of like three or four to one of me writing out publisher, blah, 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 songwriter Paul Stanley compared to writing out Gene's name. And I had never thought of it. And it, it hit me as I was doing these mechanical licenses that Paul has written a lot of the songs that bands and fans want to hear, apparently. I mean... But does it make him a better songwriter than Gene? Well, I would think so. Is, is a is a personal opinion, right? Some people like Bjork. I mean, I mean, well, you know, if if this is a court of law, you'd have to sit here and define what is better. So, is better right. defined as m more songs on an album, or more songs that have charted, or songs that have sold more units, or songs that get more radio airplay? I mean, you know, there's a whole well. Plus we're well, I'm so, gonna, so okay. I'm well, going to so base it on the empirical data. The empirically, the fans and the bands that are on my tribute wanted to cover these songs, and more likely than not, it was a song that Paul had written. So his songs seem to have touched a, a larger audience. So that's how I'm going to qualify it. Okay. He seems and, to be the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Be the better you... songwriter. No? Okay. So, what do you think, Mike? Uh, I would think Paul as well, but I mean, this is just going on. Well, who's a better songwriter? There, there's no hard evidence that I could present. It's just yes, I, can. I think I think that Gene has written more songs that are, for lack of a better term, childish in nature, and don't have as I don't know, just don't feel as. Deep, genuine, deep, genuine. Uh, let, let's try that, this. That it's one. just sort of like, oh, I need to write another song here. Let me puke out three more songs. Burn, bitch, burn. Let me put the log in your fireplace. Done. What can I do now? Okay. okay. Let, let's go this way. Live to win on this side. Asshole on this side. Which one are you listening to? And 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 I think to some extent, even Sonic Boom and Monster. You know, based on what we've heard of Paul making Gene put more effort into writing songs, he has delivered better songs on these last, Gene has, on these last two right. albums than he has probably in the last 25 years. Right, and, yeah. and go, back, go back through the 80s when Gene and Paul were essentially working separately. The, album, the songs on Asylum and Crazy Night, the Paul songs, are a lot more memorable. I mean, they just are. Mm -hmm. And I think most fans would agree with that. Because I felt like they were very much like this <coughs> until up through Dynasty. Absolutely. And then after Absolutely. that, then Paul really started to pull ahead. And that right. says probably there is a lack of effort or desire on the part of one and a huge amount of desire and effort on I the part of another. I would agree with that. 
Well, one you know? one probably needed collaboration, and one is able to stand on his own. And I, I don't, I, I don't, I think Gene can stand on his own. It's whether Gene wants to stand on his own. Perhaps he, he, you know, he might get to the, he might be in those frame of mind of, I'm cutting deals. I want to record movies. I want to produce other albums. So instead of spending all of his time wanting to write the great song he's spending his time divided over five different things and paul was just like i'm writing a great well, because song. because paul is has always been interested in being an artist and having an artistic statement and taking it seriously from his painting to his songwriting to his stage performance to even his stage raps it's all part of the the the, the, the ethos of a of an artist gene is like yeah, the fans will will love me saying uh, Domino, Bender over, blah blah blah. All right, let's go into the studio. I agree. You know? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I know it's all just a matter of of personal taste, but I I always base it on at the end of the day, whose songs or which songs will you listen to over and over more? Because I feel that up and through Dynasty, I was listening, probably I still do, 50-50. I think that a lot of Gene's songs are just as strong as Paul's, yeah. but then l literally once we get past that mark, it's just like boom. Then yeah. I could make uh, a four-CD set of Paul's songs, and I'd barely get through one with Gene. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I love more Paul songs than I do Gene songs. I love yeah. Paul Stanley's 78 solo album a million times better than Gene's 78. Mm -hmm. Live to Win, much better than Asshole. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you rephrase yeah. that? It is exponentially better than Asshole. I mean, I think Paul, you know, I think even Gene, I think Gene than can asshole. do it. It's just a matter of does he want to? And that's the frustrating part, and that's a great point to bring up because it feels like, you know, some of the stuff is there and he has the ability because not everybody can write a good song. And that's where I get frustrated because I feel like he doesn't make the effort, whereas he has on these last two records. And I'm grateful for it because there's been some really good material. I love most of what he did on Creatures. But I can't think of much past than other than some things on Revenge and then the last two records where I'll, I'll if I ever say hear that it again, some of the soon. stuff on, that he did on Psycho Circus I I liked. And on Revenge was it wasn't bad, but you know, well, yeah. But but these last two albums, I, I I've said it many times before, Gene to me on these last two albums is the real standout and the real surprise. His songs on these last two albums, for the most part, are my favorite songs. Right. But are they that good because you don't like Paul's stuff quite as well, or are you just so overly surprised by the quality of Gene's songs from what we've gotten over the last twenty plus years? No, no. Uh, it just they, they sound better. But again, as I fill out these licenses for this tribute album, I keep writing songwriter Paul Stanley, songwriter Paul Stanley. The fans, the bands, they seem to all pick Paul Stanley songs. That's got to say something. Mm -hmm. Well, would you like to see him collaborate a little bit more together? Gene and Paul? Or do you think that doesn't work? Yeah. I don't know. I'll take whatever. I mean, I'll take whatever as long I, as it's yeah, a good I, song. Well, I was just going to say, as, if it's a great song, I don't care if it was written solo. I don't care if it was written in a collaboration. I don't care if it was an outside songwriter. If it's a, a great song that is a great Kiss tune, I don't care who wrote it. I think, I think Forever is a great Kiss tune, and it's written with Michael Bolton. I mean, so be it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have no issue with outside songwriters until they start turning the, the songs or the band into something that they're not. That's where the issue is. I mean, I would never go out and buy a Michael Bolton record, but I have no, no issue with the I. fact that he's writing with, with Paul any more than I would with, um, you know, Jean Beauvoir or, you know, whoever, you know, Desmond Child, pick whoever you want. I mean, it might um, be interesting to have Gene and Paul sit down with Tommy and Eric and work out the parts and work out the lyrics together but I mean is it practical can they do it you know it's I don't know but well, and the reason I asked you, well, and the reason I asked you that piece to it is, is because I remember reading something at one point that that was one of the first things that Ezrin said to them when he went back into the studio with Revenge was, is, you know, we need to get you guys doing some stuff together like you used to. And I thought that that was kind of an interesting take because he's right, it'd been a long time since they did something like that. And I often enjoy that back and forth thing, you know, just even one song a record. But, but it, is that... Back, you know, what I like in, in songs are, are sharing of vocals, you know, gang yeah, that's vocals, what I'm, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean they wrote the song together. True, no. but if you can't get them to write the song together, at least participate together in the song. Because right. to, to me, to me that to me that's more important. I I love it when there's that song that's Gene and then Paul and then back and yeah. forth. Shout it I out could loud. Care less Let me go rock. Who wrote the song? It's it's how it sounds. That's the most important thing. Okay. All right. Good. Um, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. All right. Um, would you like to? If, okay, if we were going to have a stale set list and there was nothing we could do about it, it is what it is. If. All right. If. All right. I, well, I'm holding out hope for you, Mitch. You know, solidarity, brother. Hey, make, so, <laughs> make it two bass solos and four guitar solos. Yay. Let's add on to the fun. Look, okay, let's just kind of, you know, Ooh. we know how okay, you let's feel. Let's be serious here. Let's be real. Yeah. Okay. Would you ever like to see them switch? on certain things vocal wise for instance like back in the day gene usually sang parasite but then after a while like the i think it was australian 1980 show or tour 1880? Ace sang with him. 1980 um and ace sang with him on that or like cold like, gin went during the reunion tour kind of thing yeah or, or would you like to see him mix up some things like if you take a look at nothing to lose for instance how it's recorded on album versus say how they did it on that 77 japan show that was on hbo where so they like added when, some of that calling stuff would you like to see that sure i'd like to see tommy start shock me and have paul pick up a verse sure okay all right Mike, do you have any ideas um, that you'd like to see? I don't want to see a blatant switching of lead vocals, like all okay. of a sudden having Paul sing "God of Thunder." No, and I'm not really kind of. No. I'm not going but, there. That's no, not really but, what I'm asking. But. but switching up somebody singing a verse, a background vocal. Um, you know, the the cool thing about a live show is it gives you that ability to improvise and extend right. songs, and and you can do things that aren't recorded on an album so yeah that that's that's cool i mean to me that's sort of the whole the medley concept you know when i saw him do the right. medleys in um australia when it was uh gene paul ace and eric that was the coolest thing i'd seen in so long with kiss was just doing a five six minute medley of okay he's singing then he's singing what's coming you know you can get away with that live in concert. Right. Mitch, and, 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 and actually, sorry, that, that freshens the set up big time. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though it's the same songs you've heard over and over again, it's done in a medley, and it's like, wow, this is just like brand new. Because you, you know just want to be surprised, right? That, that might be the solution to my problem is if I can't get Parasite and nothing to lose, then throw in a five minute medley and give me like 30 seconds of each, at least to pretend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and that's another idea for them, too, to build on that idea, Mitch, is what if they got rid of all of the solos, because I agree, I'd rather have songs, and what if they did a Hotter Than Hell medley one night and a Dress to Kill medley the other? They don't have to an Elder medley? Song. Yeah. But, you know, an, ed an Elder medley would, could actually make sense, because playing a full Elder song would be useless, but a little bit of World Without Heroes with a little bit of I, with a little bit of Don't, uh, don't Run, no, wait, Don't. Don't, what, don't, run. To, what? don't escape oh, from the oh, island. The song I. I thought you were saying you, Mitch. I thought you. No, were no, I. Yeah. No, no. If they did, if the, that might actually be a smart way of giving that diehard fan that elder trip that they keep begging for that they'll never get and Listen, recognize e them e in a five e minute e spot. Even, even if they didn't do the medleys with the deep tracks, a medley of the common tracks that a lot of times they still can't play all of them. Yeah. Right. You know, a medley of Cold Gin and Do You Love Me and, you know, a few other songs that don't always make the set list is really cool. Yeah, or yeah. even an 80s medley. You throw in uh, a little bit of Who Wants to Be Lonely into Crazy Nights and just to recognize that era, which they've completely ignored. I mean, it's, 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 it's shameful that all we get from the 80s these days is Lick It Up. Shame, shame. 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 You on you. Do, do a shame. 
<laughs> well, yeah, and, and I think that that would be great, and that would take up maybe 15 minutes of the show and just do three separate medleys and then just rotate them so you could get five minutes of rock and roll over and do it album by album, and that would be a great surprise, and I don't think it would be that hard to put something like to, that together in the same manner in which if they were going to do uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, I'd like to hear the jam version from Alive added back in. Do something to freshen it up even if it's the same <coughs> All right. All right. Um, then uh, next question that uh, I'd like to have an answer for from both of you is: This is hypothetical. Back in the day when, and I know that this is, I know the first thing, Mike. I know you're going to say is it's con- you know record contractual stuff and all that. But put that type of stuff aside. Should they have ever released um, double platinum right after a live two? Or should they have gone a back into the studio? Or if they were going to have released double platinum, which you could also use as a stepping stone for any of these other ones that they've re-released, and have re-recorded or remixed some of the songs to give you more different versions of it, like how they redid Strutter 78. Should they remix some of that stuff when they do put out? Can I point out one thing about Strutter 78? Mm-hmm. Um, it actually came that- out in 77. Yeah, but that, that fabulous, fabulous drummer of ours that we know, we're looking uh, ahead. Alan Schwartzberg, who played on The Elder and who played on, he told me once that he's the one who redid those drums on Strutter 78. It is not Peter Chris. So, I mean, I have no other facts than some guy telling me, but that's what I was told. Nice little Interesting bit. Interesting little. But uh, that aside, uh, listen, uh, Double Platinum filled the gap. It filled the marketing gap. Kiss were hot. They needed product. They needed to be visible every six months. There wasn't the internet. There wasn't, and and that's how you did it with an album, a nice shiny silver album. So you know, I I, I will say, listen, you know, back then I was not the deep Kiss fanatical geek. I, I wasn't doubt like you are today. what 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 was going on and why did they do this? And it was just like, fuck, that's cool. There's another album. Yeah, and and it didn't matter, you know. There wasn't even a thought of, oh, it just came right after a live album, which is basically a greatest hits album. And now it That's... didn't didn't bother me one bit. It was just like, look at this, it's fucking cool. It's 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 gatefold and it's silver and it's shiny and it's got this platinum award in it. And my God, it's another Kiss product. Yeah, mm-hmm. and keep in mind, nowadays, being a fan, you're bombarded with the band that you like every day. You can go to their website. Hey, I'm talking. Huh? We don't listen oh, to I'm you Oh, I'm sorry, anyways. man. No, but, but back, back <laughs> then... No, you're not. <laughs> no. Back then, being a, back then, being a fan was an album came out, and then the band was invisible unless they played a show in your town, but you could go two years without knowing anything about your band. So when a new product came in... I mean, it was a different time and place. Now, Kiss puts out an album. Then you can go to Kiss Online. You can read about Kiss all day long. You can come listen to us. And, 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 you know, let's just look back. I mean, that that's, that's, technically that's was, was. The, the first greatest hits album. Right. Right, so, but it was so piggyback it, on Alive 2. That's but, why. But, but that, that didn't matter. I mean, Alive 2 was a live album, and this was the band's first greatest hits album. It's not like today when there's a new greatest hits album coming out by the, the label every three months because something's happening now now that it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah and, that, and it was a way to, it was a way to stay visible and so it was exciting and needed yeah i just i the thing that reminds me most about that period in my life is i remember being in the backyard and this it was spring and it was raking and i was talking to my dad who you know doesn't know anything about the the band he knows i like him and all that and i remember telling him i'd like you to drive me over to ridgedale so i can buy this this thing and he and you know what he said he's like don't you already have all those songs and he had no idea there was a greatest hits package and Did i and i didn't think about it at the time but i'm like that's brilliant he even he even knew you know this is my it you didn't know. stop you did it no nope. no i didn't say i wouldn't buy it i'm just asking <laughs> you what do you think didn't we're living in hypothetical land today we're playing <laughs> what ifs Yes. I can't remember what the question was. Somebody posed a question on, on the Facebook page like yesterday, and I replied back. I'm like, wow, that's like three what ifs in one question. <laughs> yeah, people uh, yeah, what I if this happened when this did oh, this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They said uh, if, what was it? It was something about if they hadn't Mitch released. Mitch was ever Metallica. right. 
No, if they hadn't released Unmasked and the Elder had, had gone from Dynasty straight to Creatures of the Night, oh, yeah. would Ace have left anyway? And had they let his solos in Creatures of the Night and his solos in Elder, would Ace have left anyway? I, I, like, I, was, I was just like, you know, it's bad enough <coughs> playing the just single one what if. This was, what if this happened, then this happened, then what if that happened, and right. would that make this change? It's just like, I don't know, fucking, I'm thinking to myself, just contingent. throw the money up in the air and let it land as it were. Any answer is going to be right after all these what ifs. Yeah. It's it, like it was, the butterfly effect. The first effect. what if was contingent on the second what if, it was just contingent on the third what if, and it's like, hey. So and by the it, time you got to the third one, you're so confused you can't remember what the, the first end of it, question you're going, was. What if Mitch got up and didn't take a crap this morning? Yeah, you know what? Ace He's was still be full of shit. <laughs> let's, let's... <laughs> <laughs> that was such a beautiful setup, and it wasn't on purpose. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> Ace would have left anyway. Now let's start winding this down because an hour of yes. this abuse is more than enough. <laughs> My fans are waiting. <laughs> I must go what? type on Twitter now. <sighs> okay. Yeah, that's about all I had today. So this so is probably can I, the... Can I throw one, one final in? Yeah, sure. please do. What, what do you guys think about a bunch of bulls wearing kiss makeup? I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that. I, I don't know. I don't, that's worse I, than Hello Kitty. Yeah. Hello Kitty is, is toys. This is this fucking putting let's make up on fucking bulls. I'm surprised that Gene hasn't tried to figure out a way to genetically work it when where and when animals actually have babies that the makeup about, isn't somehow. Well on, here here's um, somebody brought this up. They're like, How do we know that these bulls didn't come out of Gene's bull semination investment company from the Gene Simmons family jewels episode? They might have but listen, <laughs> if you're if you're going to Take a, a sort of a, a PETA stance on kiss or bulls and kiss makeup. People eating maybe tasty need, animals. No, but maybe you need to go further and say perhaps we shouldn't strap their balls at a rodeo and make them bucket. I mean, right. I, I think out of out of the whole rodeo discussion, a bull having the makeup on is the least of the bull's worries. Quite frankly, well, they, first of all, they're not putting so, the makeup on the bull for real. Right. It's but, just makeup on a bull for advertising. Right. It's just so, like, is this really rock But the bull? thing is, if it was on the bull for real, then you would have a problem because what if the bull, you know, his favorite um, member was Paul and you put jeans makeup on him? Well, he'd yeah. just buck even harder. He'd get pissed. Yeah, yeah you know, you know or vice versa. What if, what if you accident, accidentally put Tommy's makeup on an Ace Fraley bull? Oh, that would what never happen. What if it's a Wicked Lister bull? Nobody knows oh. who the Wicked Lester Bull is. They're, yeah, they they're don't be the dressed in denim. Somewhere. <laughs> no, but I mean, if, out of everything Kiss has done, uh, them photoshopping some bulls, I mean, <laughs> who cares? I don't know. It was funny. It's strange. You know? I'm not sure it was even funny. It was just a kind of a, what I mean, is this? I, I have no problem with them putting, what? What? What's <sighs> wrong? What? <laughs> Have you met Peter? That looks that like Eric. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How can you tell? I thought Eric was the one with the bow. Hey. Oh no no no! no. If uh, if somebody would say it's Eric, if he has the brown nose, <laughs> right? Isn't that what they said on some post? A few weeks the ago? yellow. Aren't they adorable? <sighs> what? 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 I can. Do, I just. I. That's what you do at, at night, don't you? You just sit around and. Can we put a live twenty four seven webcam in there, Mitch, and let the fans watch Mitch Lafon be? A kiss They're playing. Nerd. Yeah. <laughs> Gene's not here. He's at a business meeting. Spiro filling in for him. Yeah, the little baby Gene. There he is. There's Spiro. Okay, let's wrap this one up. Oh, I'm so telling was, you. I'm was there burnt. any homework? Yeah, you know, I think that um, the homework should be... When does what? Mitch take a shit? In the morning or the afternoon? <laughs> no, that's not homework. That is just a... That's just like a... Uh, 
question that you you know I don't know no I wouldn't I don't really care to talk about that um, I think that the question should be or the homework should be something like what do you either a what do you want to see them do like would you ra would you rather have a better stage show in a vanilla yeah in a vanilla um, you, can set change, list? you can only change one of two things either the better better set list or a better stage which one do you better want? better set list people yeah, I'm telling you, it. better set list is going to win. You think? Who's oh, absolutely? And then I'd also would like I would like Tommy. A, he's the homework guy. Well, I'd like he a second one though. I will. I'll keep an eye. But the, I'd like to add a second one to that. I also would like to get everyone's opinion on whether you would like to see those medleys. Well, I Some. The, the answer I know will be yes. Not necessarily. Some people don't like show. partial songs. You know, Metallica, they're not real Kiss fans then. No, but uh, Metallica a few years ago did the Ride the Lightning medley, the uh, the Ride Lightning medley, I think they called it, and fans were pissed off. They're like, I'd rather hear you play Master of Puppets or whatever in full. That's a, I say wrong album, but they were like, no, I want to hear that in full. It's because and Metallica be fans are not as gullible as Kiss fans. Um, oh, I don't know about that. I think yeah, you that, know, it's going to be interesting. I, I would... Probably say give Michael me a called show. Kiss fans gullible. You heard it. You said it. But we gullible. all know that. You're a hater. You are a hater. Oh, I didn't I got call the, anybody got in the, the band a horse, did I? Neither yeah. did I. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not gullible at, at all. No, really. It's not like. It's not I'm like surprised you don't have to like stand back farther from the camera to show all of that stuff. German logo and yeah. He's gonna get yeah. another one with the German logo with the song from iTunes. Hold on, I'm not done yet. There we go. God, Gene loves you. I was thinking the exact same thing. It almost looks like the Revenge album. Same kind of makeup, painting. Okay. With that, I say we should say goodbye. <laughs> No, but look, this one, it, it, it has a booklet. See? Are you going to push stop, Mike? Uh, oh, I, it's, it's like a train wreck. I can't stop looking at this. Yeah, There's a map of wait. the U.S., and it says kiss across it. So do you believe that if you flew over the U.S., you'd see the logo? This one says radio promo. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, you don't have that. I don't think too many radio stations got that one. I don't think most radio stations have it either. <laughs> and look, there are Z's backwards. What? And this one is lenticular. <laughs> Christ, my wife's going to see this. And she's going to say, no wonder we have no money left. Never mind. Well, we'll just edit that five minutes out. So for the four of you that are still watching, thanks for tuning in. Oh, all right, guys, you know the drill. Facebook.com slash three sides of the coin. Three sides of the coin. Leave us your oh. comments. Answer the homework. Make fun of Mitch. And don't forget, uh, May Tuesday, May 21st, live. Three sides of the coin. Look at this. Coin. Come on, this is awesome. We're going to hit the, the stop button, and Mitch will continue doing this for the next six hours. It's the Kiss Resurrection but in a paper sleeve. Huh? Huh? It says Casablanca. Help me, please. This Oops, could I be dropped a fun it. episode, Tommy. We could do this one whole episode. We could just sit back and let Mitch just pull stuff out. But come on, it's a paper sleeve. It's like a mini album. What will they think of next? Really? You know, when you, when you get older and your kids are grown, and you pass. <laughs> and this I watch these videos. all just going to get thrown in the garbage. And I watch these videos on YouTube and go, the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> Who is that crazy man? That well, crazy Canadian. It's just, it's all part of the show. you got to be entertaining. I wish it was part of the show. I wish it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> It is to someone, I would imagine. You. Hi. You, yeah. You.
Mitch on, turns the is... camera on and just watches himself all day do this. That's right. Anything else I got here that's kind of cool? Yeah. Really? Can we just... Yeah. Should we just oh. hit uh -huh. the stop button? Uh, that'll be right something here. Now, is this... Is there ever going to be a break, or do we just... How does this end? Mitch, isn't that your, is, aren't your kids yelling to you? Don't you have to feed someone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> that could be useful. His kids are starving as he's playing with his Kiss CDs. Father of the year. <laughs> Paper sleeve. A small album. Genius. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We're sorry <laughs> for the last five minutes. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> mm.